I'm going to talk about the lesson, the last lesson. Chapter number one, Flamingo, class 12. This, uh, this lesson is written by a French author and his name is Alphonse Joyet. In this chapter, the author is talking about so many things. You will get a glimpse of an ideal teacher. You will also get a glimpse of patriotism. And of course, this chapter is all about the importance of mother tongue. So please watch this video till last. And I'm going to explain each and every aspect of this, this lesson. And that will be useful for you. So starting with, we are talking about the period 1870-71. There was a war in Europe. And the name of the war was Franco-Prussian War. Now this word Franco stands for France and Prussian stands for Prussia. Prussia was a German state or you can say that Prussia was a state under the influence of Germany. France and Prussia, they are two bordering states. Now in this war, the Prussians dominated the French army and they took over two districts of two bordering the bordering districts of France namely Alsace and Lorraine so these two districts were taken over by the Prussians and now they have the complete authority on these two districts and as I told you earlier that uh, Prussia was under German influence so after some time an order comes from Berlin and it says that when, when the order comes on the, that particular day that this day is going to be the last day of teaching French language in the schools of Alsace and Lorraine because these two districts are under our command. So the order said that there will be no teaching of French language from the next day, only the German language will be taught. Now the order was from Berlin and it was, it was almost replicable on, in these two districts. Now if you look about the school system in those days, now in those days schools were primarily language schools. The first purpose, the main purpose was to teach the language to the students. There used to be one, uh, in a school there used to be one classroom, one teacher and that teacher would teach French language and apart from that he is the one who will be teaching the other subjects also like history, geography, arithmetic, and all. So the designation of the teacher was at that time French language teacher. Now what did the order say? According to the order, this was the last day of teaching French language in the schools of those two districts. From the next day, a new teacher will come and he will be teaching German language. So with this order, the career of all the French language teachers teaching in different schools of Alsace and Lorraine, their career came to an end because from the next day, a new German teacher will come to that school. So number one, that day was the last day of the teacher in the school. And in the last day, the teacher, he would be taking up a class and that would be his last class. And in the last class, the lesson that he would be taking up would be his last lesson. Now this is how, this is the justification of the title, the last lesson. So I'm just trying to explain it to you why this lesson is called the last lesson because of an order which came from Berlin which said that it was the last year of teaching French language in the schools of these two districts. So as I told you that this chapter is about the last lesson taught by a teacher in his school. The teacher being talked about in the lesson and his name is, his name is M. Hamel. M. Hamel was the French language teacher in a school of Alsace in France. Now he had been teaching in that school for about 40 years and 40 years as the only teacher of that school. Now because of this, if, if there is someone who has been teaching in a school for about 40 years as the only teacher, then he will naturally develop two things in himself. Number one, 
he developed a tremendous sense of belongingness. Now you have the whole soul authority of the school for us, many hours, 40 long years. So the entire school belongs to you. You get totally attached with the school. So he had that kind of attachment with the school. And secondly, he also developed a great sense of authority. Now authority means he was the only teacher. So he was the teacher, he was the principal, he was the director. So whatever he said was the rule for the school. So if he wanted to close the school at his own accord, there was no one to ask him not to do that. Because he was the whole sole authority of the school. So he got tremendous sense of belonging, this entire school belonged to him. And he also developed a tremendous sense of authority for the school. Because he was the one who is the I mean, real head of that school. Now because of these two things and on top of that, he was emotional also. He was totally devoted to his profession. He was a very serious teacher. Although there are certain flaws also, but then we have to overlook them. And we'll just concentrate on the qualities of our best teacher, of a very good teacher, which he had. Now he was really concerned with teaching the students the French language. The reasons are uh, more than what we, we can consider right now, but then we'll talk about, talk about those reasons after some time. Now, look about a teacher teaching in a school for about 40 years and one fine morning uh, he gets an order. An order says that, well, pack up, this is your last day in the school. At least a person like M. Hammond who was very, very emotional. He hadn't expected such kind of departure from the school. So he was very sad. He was very disappointed. Rather, we must use he was very disgusted. Disgusted is a kind of situation when you are disappointed but you can't do anything about the situation. So the order came from Berlin. Germans had the authority on these two, on these two districts. So there was no calling back of the order, order. And he was bound to follow. So you can say in his last class when he had to deliver his last next uh, last lesson, M. Hamill was very, very disappointed. He was very serious and he had put on his best dress. He had one dress which was his best dress and he usually put on that dress on two occasions in a year. So you can understand in this way that he took out that dress only twice, twice in a year. One on the price, annual price distribution day and secondly if there was any inspection in the school on the day of inspection. But today it was going to be the most important day of his life because it was his last day in the school. So he put on his best dress, stood in the class, very serious and he was waiting for the students to come and enter into the class. Now the second important character in this chapter is Franz. Although the age of Franz is not given in the story, but the way he narrates the story, we can think him to be a child of about 11 or 12 years, the way he narrates the story. Now Franz is on the way to the school, quite unaware of the order which had come from Berlin. So he was not aware of the order. It was just any ordinary day for him for the school. Now when he started for the school, he was unwilling. <clears throat> Not willing to go to the school. There are two reasons for that. Number one, he had started very late that morning. Number two, the teacher had asked him to learn the rules of participants which he had not learned. And M. Hamel was a strict teacher. So Franz was afraid of being scolded by the teacher for not learning French language and for coming to the school, not learning participles and for coming to the school late. So he was unwilling to go to the school, but then there was something on that particular day that he crossed all the hurdles that came on his way to the school. So he continued. Then he came across three temptations on the way to the school. Temptations means here that there were three things which were more interesting than going to sit in the classroom and attend the lesson, attend the class. First, the day was warm and bright. 
not a day to remain indoors. She wanted to enjoy the fine weather out there. Second, he wanted to listen to the chirping of birds near the woods. And third, he was impressed by the drilling exercise of the Prussian soldiers behind the sawmill. She wanted to watch them, see them for, for quite some time, which was quite impressive for him. But then he crossed this hurdle also. He crossed all the three temptations and he continued his journey towards the school. After some time, he came near the town hall. In the town hall, there was a bulletin board. And on the, in, right in front of the bulletin board, there were many people who were standing there. Franz thought, what could be the matter today? Why are there so many people in front of the bulletin board? Because for the past two years, every kind of bad news had come from the bulletin board. The news about the lost battles, the drafts and orders of the commanding officers and all. He didn't have time to stop there and uh, watch or see what, is the, what was there on the bulletin board, so he continued. Just then, he heard someone calling him and the person was watcher. Now please uh, take care of this spelling because this is the spelling which is given in the lesson. It's W-A-C-H-T-E-R. So this is what you have to write. So watcher was a blacksmith and he was standing there in front of the bulletin board with his apprentice. Apprentice is a person who is a trainee or a helper kind of. Now watcher said, come on Bob, you will get plenty of time to go to the school. Why are you in such a hurry? Because Franz was almost rushing towards the school. And uh, I mean, this man, Watcher thought, anyway, this was going to be the last day, so how does it matter? But Franz thought that Watcher was making fun of him. Just think about from the point of view of Franz, he was getting late to the school, he was rushing towards the school, and there is a person who is asking, what, why is so hurry about, what is this, what is so hurry about going to the school? So he thought he was making fun of him, so he didn't pay any attention and he continued his journey towards the school and he finally reached the little garden of M. Hamel. When Franz reached the little garden of M. Hamel, he was surprised to find, to see that uh, it was as quiet as a Sunday morning. Although it was not a Sunday morning, but there was complete silence. Had it been any other usual day, then there were three kinds of noises which could be heard from the corner of the street. If it were the school was open, three kinds of noises included number one, the opening and closing of desks by the students, number two, the wrapping of iron ruler by the teacher on the table, number three, lessons repeated in unison. Unison means when all the students repeat the same thing together loudly. So these three kinds of noises could be heard from the corner of the street, but today everything was so solemn and serious. Now, he counted on the commotion before entering into the class. That's a very important thing. He counted on the commotions. Look at the word phrase, counted on. Counted on means to make an estimate of something. And commotions means the noisy disturbances. Now he counted on the commotions, that means he estimated the kind of noisy disturbance he would make when he would enter into the class. He thought he would manage to enter into the class without being noticed by anyone, but that was not the situation that day. There was complete silence and the moment he entered into the class, he was embarrassed and he, he blushed also. Embarrassed because he was disturbing the class. Now once he entered into the class, he was surprised for three different reasons. Number one, it happened for the first time that M. Hamel didn't scold him for coming late to the school. Number two, M. Hamel had put on his best dress, although it was not uh, the annual prize distribution day or neither there was any kind of inspection in that school. So he was surprised. Now, the third reason of his surprise was the back benches, it usually remained empty. Now today, the back benches were full of old villagers. 
There was old Hauser who had come with a primer. Primer is a book of alphabets or rhymes. So there was old Hauser who had come with a primer, and then there were there was former mayor, there was former postmaster, and there were several others also. So the back benches were full of old villagers. Now he wondered what could be the reason today. Why are there so many people who usually didn't come to this school? I told you earlier also that uh, students of different age groups, they were supposed to come and sit together in the classroom and learn the French language. So usually the people of Alsace, they had a very, uh, they had the attitude of neglect towards learning the language. So usually they didn't come to the school. But today the back benches were full of old villagers. Now, M. Hammond made the announcement. He said that, friends, an order has come from Berlin according to which this is going to be your last French lesson. Tomorrow, a new master comes and he'll be teaching you the German language. Now, this announcement, all the other students, all the other villagers except French, they were prepared for this because they knew the order which had come from Berlin. France didn't know this order. So when, when M. Hamel made the announcement, it fell on him like a thunderclap. Thunderclap is something, it's a shocking surprise. You, you get a very shocking news all of a sudden. And he was not prepared for this. He even asked himself, how is it possible? I haven't learned French language and now there will be no teaching of French language in the school from the next day. After the announcement made by M. Hamel, Franz's perception changed about three things. Number one, his perception changed about the school. The school used to be an uninteresting place for him. He didn't prefer to come to this school. Instead, he preferred seeking birds' eggs in their nests. That means in, in the village areas, the small kids, they just climb up the trees. And they just pick out, pick up the eggs from the nest of the birds. This is what he liked. And he also, uh, he was also, I mean, quite prone to uh, sliding on the SAR. SAR, here it's SAR word is with capital S. That it's a name of a river. So you can understand in this way that he preferred spending time on the riverside instead of coming to the school. But after this order came, now school became the most interesting place for him, the most important place for him. About the books, he thought books to be perfect nuisance, too heavy to carry. But after this order, those books became his friends for lifetime. And so far as M. Hamel was concerned, he developed a deep sense of respect for him. And he forgot, he even forgot how cranky he was. Cranky is a person uh, who is very uh, strict kind of person who is not liked by the students. But something, something, something was there and, and he developed a deep sense of respect for the teacher. Now, after this, he asked Franz, come on Franz, tell, tell me about the rules of participles. Obviously, Franz was not prepared. So he just, he was just looking downcast. Then Ahmed said, well Franz, you might have been feeling bad enough. Of course, you are responsible for not learning French. But then, even we have many things to reproach ourselves with. That means that there are some other people also who are responsible for your not learning French. For example, just talk about your parents. They always prefer to send you to the mills or at the farms to earn a little extra instead of sending you to the school. And even I am to be blamed because whenever you came to the school, I often sent you to water the flowers. And whenever I wanted to go for fishing, I usually declared a holiday in the school. So your parents are responsible and at the same time, even I am responsible for your not learning French. After this, the second aspect of M. Hamel's character comes out and that is patriot. So he was a true patriot and he believed that he had a deep sense of regard for the mother tongue and his mother tongue was French language and it, there was an attack on the language because Germans, what they did, 
they attacked on the French language. They stopped teaching of French language. They wanted to impose their language on the French people. Now I said that French language, he had a true regard for the French language. And he said three things about the language. He said, French language is the most beautiful language in the world, the clearest and the most logical language of the world. And all the Frenchmen must guard the language among themselves. Reason behind why he gives a statement here. Just look at the statement. When a people are enslaved, that means when the people of a country uh, get governed by some other country, when they take over their country. So when the people are enslaved, so long as they hold fast to their mother tongue or to their language, so long as you just hold to, to your mother tongue, so long as you let your mother tongue remain alive in you. It is as if they have key to their prison. This prison is prison of slavery. So there is a clear message to the French people, to the people of Francis from Amham that just hold fast to your mother tongue. Now this mother tongue will not only create a sense of pride among you, but this mother tongue will keep on inspiring you to throw out the Germans from your country. So if you want to come out of the slavery of the Germans, mother tongue is going to help you in a big deal. So just keep yourself to that and keep the language alive in yourself. Now M. Hamel makes a comment on the attitude of the people of Alsace towards learning the French language. As I told you earlier that almost everyone was supposed to come and learn the French language. But then the people, they just kept on coming to the school till tomorrow. Kept on postponing their coming to the school tomorrow, the next day. And tomorrow never came in their life. So he said that that's the main problem with Alsace. She puts off learning till tomorrow. She here stands for people of Alsace. Now I say that now you have you have come to a situation then you will not get a chance to learn your own language. Now they have every right to say to you, they here refers to the Germans. The Germans or the Prussians, they have every right to say to you, how come you pretend to be a Frenchman and you don't know your own language? Now after this, M. Hamel had planned a writing class for, for all the students. He had brought notebooks for each student. On the cover page of the notebook, he wrote in his beautiful round handwriting, Alsace, France, Alsace, France. And he kept one notebook on one desk, each desk. So France compared those notebooks to the flags because they were looking identical. When the writing session was going on, some beetles flew in. Now children are the ones who respond to them and they run away. But everyone was so busy and so involved in the class that even the children, they didn't even look towards the beetles and they just flew out. When the writing class was going on, Franz heard some pigeons cooing on the roof of the classroom. And then he made a comment and he said, will they make them sing in German, even the pigeons? Now this is, this is a comment on the war of language started by the Germans. It's a comment on the language chauvinism, linguistic chauvinism started by the Germans because they directly attacked on the French language. Now Franz clearly asked, how can you force the birds and animals to sing in your language? You can force the humans to learn your language. So this, this was a comment on the war started by the Germans on French language. Now after, when the writing class was going on, M. Hamel, he wanted to teach everything in one stroke. Now he just wanted everyone to learn everything about the French language. Franz even commented, that he had never taught so seriously and I have never I had never understood the things so clearly. Both ways 
that class was very important, very serious. Now, while the students were busy in writing, M. Hamel started observing everything outside the window and all. It seemed as if he wanted to capture everything in his eyes because uh, it was just a matter of a day and next day he had to leave the place. You remember I talked about Old Hazard who had come with a primer. Frank said that, how can I forget that last lesson when everyone was in tears and everyone, everyone wanted to laugh and cry together. Cry because everyone was feeling really emotional. Almost everyone was in tears. But they wanted to laugh also because of this man, Old Hauser. Now he was reading that primer. He was not deliberately reading those things in a funny way, but the way he was pronouncing the words, that was funny. So listening him speaking or reading the words made everyone laugh. So all of them, they wanted to laugh and they wanted to cry. And those were the emotional moments of, of that particular last lesson. Just then, the church clock struck 12. Three things happened right after that. It was followed by Angelus. Angelus is a kind of prayer in the church. Then the Prussian soldiers started getting back to their barracks after the uh, exercise, the drilling exercise. And it also marked the end of the class, end of the lesson. When the last moment came, M. Hamel was so emotional that he wanted to say something, but the words choked in his throat. He said, friends, I, I. And after that, he couldn't speak anything. And then he took a piece of chalk and with all his might, he wrote on the blackboard, He wrote on the blackboard, We will of France. We will of France means long live France. So he wrote on the blackboard, We will of France. He was unable to speak anything. So he dismissed the class by making a gesture with his hands and saying that class is over. So this is all, all about the last lesson. So guys, this was all about the lesson, the last lesson. This was just a gist of the chapter. I also take online classes due to Corona, COVID-19 uh, situation. So I take online classes for 9, 10, 11, 12 for English. And in my classes, I talk in details about the lessons and the questions and those questions which are of the pattern of CBSC. And then I also guide the students how to write the answers, how much to write in one particular answer, how to include all those points, important points in an answer. So in classes, regular classes, I mean, I take online classes and I talk in details about each and every chapter and poem. So my contact details are in the description. So you can, uh, you can send your query along that number. And apart from that, I'll be uploading my next video on a uh, success story of my students of class 12 of their last batch. So it, there was a huge success on their part. They scored very well there from different schools of Delhi. So I'll share uh, their, their success story or their success in my next video. So please do watch. And I'll be talking about my strategies, how I manage, or how I prepare the students for scoring above 95. So I'll be talking in, in my next video. So please do watch that video. And guys, thank you so much for watching my video. And before leaving, please do subscribe my channel and press that bell icon. Thank you so much.